In Season of the Lost, right before Witch Queen launched, Landfall got buffed for the Storm Train Super, and it became kinda cracked. I started using this a bunch with a couple of different builds just to change things up, and the main exotic I ended up running was actually Mantle of Battle Harmony. I feel like this thing is slept on by a lot of the community, and today we are finally putting it to use. Yo, what's going on guys, it's G Miners here, and in this video we are going over an arc build that is going to let us get our super back in less than 30 kills, and then this exotic will also provide us with a pretty substantial and constant damage boost with all of our arc weapons. So we're going to have some pretty solid synergies going on here, and then we are also going to be using some mods to make this bonus damage even higher, along with some fragments and aspects to help improve our super regen and the regen of all our other abilities. For the most part, I am running Trinity Ghoul with this build, but Risk Runner also works extremely well. This, combined with Arc Souls, the Jolting Effect, and our Grenades, means we are constantly going to be dealing Chain Lightning damage, so enemies are going to be flinched and stunlocked in certain cases. I'll probably be putting out a very similar build using Mantle of Battle Harmony for Stasis in the next few days as well, so if you guys do want to see that along with some other builds like it, make sure to drop a like and sub below. Subbing is 100% free, it helps me out a ton, and you can always unsub later. And with that said, let's take a look at the Arc 3.0 layout. You are going to be seeing some gameplay on both Chaos Reach and Storm Trance in this video. Chaos tends to be better for damage and then Storm Trance for ad clear. Neither feels like they are much stronger than the other, so I just end up using whatever is most needed for the activity you are running. After this, make sure you are on Healing Rift. Mantle of Battle Harmony will give us a roaming buff equal to Empowering Rift, so we're gonna have no use for that. And then I also prefer to run Ball Lightning as my melee and Pulse Grenade as my nade because these tend to do a good amount of damage against champs compared to the other abilities. For our very first aspect, we are going to be on Arc Soul. Whenever we place down a Rift, we are going to be providing ourselves and our teammates with Arc Souls, which will automatically target and shoot enemies. And this can be refreshed by leaving and then entering the Rift again. We are also going to be getting pretty decent ability regen with the build, so even with lower recovery, you can get a 100% uptime on Arc Souls and your Healing Rift. And then anytime we become Amplified, these Arc Souls are then going to gain an increase in fire rate. This means more damage output and a faster TTK, and then overall just more ad clear and better ad killing capabilities in end game content. Lastly, these will also count as ability kills, which comes in clutch for our second aspect. Electrostatic Mind is going to give us the ability to now spawn in Ionic Traces whenever we get an ability kill, or whenever we kill an Arc debuffed enemy. Arc debuffed enemies are those that are affected by blinding and jolting effects, and then after this, by collecting the Ionic Trace, we are going to become Amplified. This means we can now use our melee, grenade, and our rift to generate these ionic traces because our rifts have arc souls. And when it comes to our rift, since this does last a while, we are going to constantly generate ionic traces as these arc souls get us kills. Since we are constantly collecting the traces, this means arc soul should and will always be permanently beefed up to shoot at its max fire rate. And each time that we collect an ionic trace, we are also going to get ability energy back. This is what keeps the uptime on our rifts and other abilities high. Each trace will give us 12.5% melee and grenade energy back, and then 15% class ability energy as well. These aspects are going to give us four fragments to work with, so up first we have Spark of Amplitude. As we get rapid kills while amplified, we are going to be generating orbs of power. This is going to do two things for us in the build. First, since we are farming super extremely fast with Mantle of Battle Harmony, this will further the rate at which we get energy on orb pickup. And then second, since this build doesn't have the survivability of something like Devour or Restoration, we can use Recuperation on our boots for some constant healing on orb pickup. Spark of Discharge is now going to give our Arc Weapon Final Blows the ability to spawn in Ionic Traces. Since we do spam primary in the build, this is just going to be more regen for our abilities, and it adds to the uptime on Arc Souls and their increased fire rate as well. Spark of Magnitude is going to increase the duration of our grenades with lingering effects. Since we are using pulse grenades, this is now going to go from 6 total pulses up to 8, which is a 33% increase. And if you use something like overload grenades this season, these 2 extra pulses are going to help a ton. 
And then I also have on Spark of Shock so that my pulse grenades apply jolt to enemies. This will in turn increase their effective AoE and damage when jolt effects chain back and forth to multiple enemies caught in the grenade. For endgame content, I would recommend subbing one of these last two fragments out for Spark of Resistance. The reason I don't have it on right now is because I was running Trinity Ghoul in most cases, so this isn't a weapon that you sit close to enemies with, but if you do opt to use Risk Runner, you will be much closer, so Spark of Resistance will be able to proc and give you a 25% damage reduction, and Risk Runner will also reduce incoming damage by another 50% as well for all arc damage. Taking a quick look over at Mantle of Battle Harmony, this exotic works by using weapons that match our subclass type. So for us, that is going to be Arc Weapons, which is why I personally choose to run Trinity. With this, if our super is not charged yet, anytime we get a kill, we are going to get the perk Energy Siphon for 2 seconds. This is going to give us 3% of our super energy back, and we'll proc again once those 2 seconds are up. This means we will get 99% super energy in just 33 kills. So if you end up factoring in additional super charge time and energy from kills and energy from orbs that we are spawning in, this is more like 20 kills. If our super is full, on the other hand, then we are instead going to proc the buff Absorption Cells. Now we are going to get a 20% weapon buff to arc weapons each time we get an arc weapon kill. This is going to max out at a 10 second duration, so as long as we keep getting kills, we permanently have a 20% boost in our weapons damage, and this does count as a regular buff. I mentioned that we will also be using mods to make this damage stack even higher, so you're going to want to make sure you have the following setup. First is going to be a way to spawn arc elemental wells, and since we are relying on weapon kills, I like running elemental armaments. This will have an escalating chance to spawn in an elemental well each time we get a kill that matches our subclass type. After this, I am running elemental time dilation. This mod is extremely useful as it now allows duration-based elemental well mods to stack, providing a longer duration. After this, I have three copies of Phantomite on. Having three copies allows us to have 21 seconds of an arc weapon boost now. Typically, this only lasts for 11 seconds, so this is almost double the duration. Phantomite will only ever proc if we grab an arc elemental well and will only boost our arc weapon damage, which is what will make something like Trinity hit much harder in end game content. Overall, I think this build is super fun to run and even works well in the endgame against overloads because you can use both overload arc grenades and overload bow this season. Your heavy and kinetic slots are also both open, so you can flex to whatever burn activity you may have. And for GMs this season, having a full arc lineup means that with this build and some arc heavies, we are going to be getting 20% from our chest, 25% from Fanta Might, another 25% from Acute Arc Burn, and now be hitting for almost double damage. As I mentioned in the intro, there is a pretty broken build with this exotic on stasis as well, which is extremely useful for master content and even in GMs. So if you guys do want to see that, make sure to let me know in the comments below, along with your thoughts on this build and how you think Arc 3.0 is feeling now that we are later into the season. I do also stream a bunch over on my Twitch, and we are pushing for partners. So if you guys want to watch some lowmans, speedruns, and other challenges, make sure to drop by. I also do have a community Discord if you want to join that and say what's up over there. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.